Honor me, O God, in this season. Lay your hands on your head and pray that prayer. Honor me for the sake of your kingdom. Lift me for the sake of your kingdom. the God who honors and lifts you want men to come to Jesus you must present to the nations and for the nations a God who can honor and a God who can lift first Chronicles 29 12 a God who honors both riches and honor come from thee and thou reignest over all and in thy hand is power and might and in thy hand it is to make great and give strength to all i will never sell a weak jesus who does not seem to be interested in lifting men and in honoring men among the many benefits are the, that are the privilege of the saints there is something called the inheritance of the saints in light I think that should be Colossians 1 and verse 12 or so. The inheritance of the saints in light. Giving thanks to the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. The God who lifts. Psalm 71 verse 21. God gave me this as a prophetic word about three years ago during my birthday. I've refused to leave that word. He did not give me and say by next year I should leave it. Every other thing he's saying, I drag this word with it. Let me, let me quote it and then prophesy it over your life. He said, thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Now let me declare it over you that may my God increase your greatness. May my God increase your greatness. May my God increase your greatness. Hallelujah. So don't be surprised when you hear in Koinonia ordinary people being elevated. It's the God that makes great. I was so touched by the testimony of that gentleman. A young man coming and trekking and moving around. And today God has honored him. Don't tell me it does not matter. He said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds. I'm praying the next testifier, I, I release you in the name of Jesus into your testimony. The next testifier, I release you into your testimony. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1. We must present to the world a God that lifts. In addition to a God who loves and forgives. In addition to a God who heals. In addition to a God who redeems and delivers. We must present as the end time church. If we want to compel the nations to come. We must present a God who lifts and honors. Ladies and gentlemen, there are families that are downcast. There are destinies that are downcast. They have never tasted glory. They have never tasted honor. Transgenerationally, from great-grandfather to grandfather to father to the current generation, all that has plagued that generation is shame and reproach. They have wallowed in sin, serving like the men of Athens, an unknown God. Now you want them to live Leave what they are doing and come to the Lord Jesus Christ. You must present to them a God who lifts. That God can set you up on high above all the nations of the earth. You see, let me tell you the truth. And I submit to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you know one of the reasons why I travel to these nations to go and minister with joy? Because among the many things that I seek for the people to see... Is a living testimony of a lifting Jesus. A living testimony of a lifting Jesus. You can doubt anything you want to doubt in a man, but you cannot argue when God lifts a man. When a politician lifts a man, it depends on whether that, polit that political party is in power. Are we together? But when God lifts you, no. So God helps us as we travel to the nations to not only preach Christ, to not only teach the word, but to inspire a generation that if anybody ever told you is a waste to love Jesus, look at my life as an evidence that he lifts. 
And I'm saying that to someone while you are seated. If you saw me 15, 20 years ago, I would not look like this. Now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear. Find hope. The God you are serving, the one you have come to, even the God of Koinonia is the God that lifts. I can tell you, he's not just the God who educates your mind. Every week as you come here, you are encountering not only the forgiving God, not only the healing God, not only the delivering God. Even tonight, you are encountering the God who honors and the God who lifts. To lift you and elevate you. You will hear of many people who will come and tell you, I was an ordinary person, but presidency has called me to do something. Don't say it does not matter. These are signatures of God, revealing himself as a lifting God. I will never forget, and I say this with every sense of humility, years ago when the Lord told me that a day will come, heads of state and presidents and kings will call you. And I believed it blindly, but these are the days when those realities are happening. And I look at my life and say, Lord, be Beyond what you are doing in my life, help a generation know that when you speak, they should take you seriously. <laughs> Hallelujah. I remember one of the things the Lord told me, this will be the first time I'm saying it here. When I was asking him about our building project and whatever, the Lord said that I will make you and I will make my house a praise to the nations. I didn't understand what he was saying, but now it's beginning to piece itself together. Anything you hear, ba. Just say, thank God, but believe it. As what God can do, if it is in this household, just know that there is no miracle that is too big that you say, Kai, is this true? If it is God, you just believe it. He does these things to show the nations that he can be trusted. Did I not tell you that years ago the Lord told me that if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. God lived so, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, he says, I will draw men. So when God wants men to come, he will lift you because you are committed to lifting him. Koinonia will not go down, no. Joshua Selman will not go down. I, I can tell you that by the Spirit. Because there is a hand. We are not standing on a ladder. We are not standing on a a casted pole was standing on an invisible hand. The height is the size that whatever direction and height that hand lifts you, that's where you stay. And it has pleased him to continue lifting us. And we're praying that in the name of Jesus, he will not find reason to peg our growth. Hmm. Compared to where God is taking us, this is only a step out of the cave. This is child's play. You wait and see when God is done cleaning. You know how you present an artwork to the nations. And you say, just see, don't touch. They put it and cover it. This is what God is doing. He's bringing glory out of you through the prayer, through the fasting, through the disciplines. When he's done, he will present you to your family, present you to the nations, and they will say, truly, this is what God can do. The God who lifts some of you have encountered the God who forgives. Some of you have encountered the God who heals. Some of you have encountered the God who redeems and delivers. But maybe church has taught you that lifting and honor is not part of his benefits. I am telling you now, the end time church that wants to present a complete God that will compel all to come must also reveal the God who honors and who lifts. That one of these days we will stand here and all of us will be crying in Koinonia because somebody will come to testify and say, look at my life and look at how God has lifted me. Lifted me beyond my limitation. Lifted me in spite of my family. Lifted me in spite of my tribe. In spite of my educational qualification. And he has lifted me so that I will become a praise to the nations. I told him, I said, Lord, if for any reason you are looking for someone that you can show the nations as a sample of your handiwork, I am an available vessel. Koinoni, are you learning? The God who lifts. Can I tell you? There are many of you who are seated here. 
the major issues in your life are centered around honor, lifting, and finding a sense of purpose for your life. You are trusting God for jobs. There are young men who are trusting God to be established. And you, you come for koinonia because you love the Lord. But in truth, you also come because you suspect in your heart that if he's that mighty, then lifting should not be an impossible thing for him to do. And you are right. It should not be a suspicion. It should become a conviction tonight that the God we seek to propose to the nations is a God that lifts. It's a God that lifts. Can he lift a minister of the gospel? Yes. Can he lift a woman? Yes. Can he lift a man? Yes. Can he take the poor from the dunghill and place him in a position of prominence and honor? Yes. Can he lift a Yoruba family? Yes. Can he lift an Igbo family? Can he lift a Middle Beltan family? How about the family of an orphan? Yes. How about a widow? Yes. How about a widower? Yes. How about someone who has lost all his siblings and is alone? Regardless the condition, if it is my God, the one that the Bible talks about, not the one that the narrative of preachers has lopsided, the God that the Bible talks about is a God who honors and a God who lives. Honor me, O God, in this season. Lay your hands on your head and pray that prayer. Honor me for the sake of your kingdom. Lift me for the sake of your kingdom. Go ahead. Don't be afraid. Don't feel guilty for praying that prayer. Your elevation is good for the kingdom. Go ahead and pray. Because my heart is right with you. Lord, do not restrain your hand as far as lifting me is concerned. You are a man of God. Pray this sincere prayer. Let it please you to lift my ministry. Give it honor and visibility before the nations. The God who honors, the God who lifts, the God who honors, both riches and honor come from you. Koinonia, pray. If the mountain of the Lord's house must be exalted and if all nations should flow to it, then that house must present a God that honors a God that lifts. Hallelujah. Number five. Someone you just prayed into your next level right now. <laughs>